Good morning guys. This is Rory, the multi-hat mentor. Today I'm going to share how I scored a 96 on my SANS GWAFT exam and I'm going to share my strategy that way you can too. So first off uh, I'm going to cover why web app pen testing, why GWAFT specifically, and then of course how to ace the exam and that's going to be the most of this video. So going into it, why web app pen testing specifically? Well, let's start by understanding what web app pen testing is rather than uh, other forms of pen testing. Web app pen testing is testing websites like Amazon.com in an effort to find vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting, SQL injection, or others that are relying on the application. Why should you focus on web app pen testing? It's less automatable than other forms of penetration testing. We've already seen that network pen testing uh, and some of the cloud as well has been already taken over by AI agents that can perform those tasks really well. So as of right now, uh, there's a little bit of a shield preventing it from being automated at the moment. So before you jump into it, uh, you can understand that it's gonna last a little bit longer. There's less competition in the field because it's a pretty complicated field. Uh, the reason why AI can't take it over is because it's very contextual, has a lot of business logic errors and other forms of vulnerabilities that are not too common. You're gonna have to learn how HTML works, CSS, PHP, SQL, JavaScript, and a whole other host of different languages. Uh, if you wanna be scripting, you gotta learn Python so you can make good programs. There's also a higher value to web app pen testing. Not only do you find more as a web app pen tester than you do a network pen tester, at least that's been my experience, you also get compensated higher. Uh, generally, the price per app is pretty large. So assessments uh, can rake in uh, a good amount of money if you're able to get them. Bug bounties, sadly, you aren't able to get too, too much money unless you find a way to really quickly run through them and get a lot. So why do something like GWACT instead of maybe Portswigger uh, and their academy. Now, don't get me wrong, Portswigger's academy is amazing, and I bet their cert is great, but SANS is renowned for their certs and for their training. They go into really deep detail regarding the material. It's extremely comprehensive. It's better structured than what Portswigger has, uh, in my opinion. It was a lot easier to follow and understand the importance of each, each item. And then, of course, it's a recognized certification, and so employers really respect it. Now, what you guys came here for was how to ace the exam. Now, this may not work for everyone, but this is what worked for me. So, first off, you need to make sure you do every single lap at least one time. This is gonna allow you to be really good at those cyber life questions that they're gonna hit you on the exam. You have about 68 multiple choice questions somewhere around there, and like it's like seven to 10 uh, cyber lab questions. And those questions are gonna be really difficult uh, if you do not do the labs. If you do the labs, I coasted through them. I thought they were fun. I was having a blast during the exam, actually. Additionally, on top of doing all the labs at least once, you wanna make sure that you also do port swiggers labs as well. Cross-site scripting is a really big topic with a lot of complicated nuances. Doing Port Swiggers Labs is gonna help you understand the context and understand uh, better ways to exploit more effectively, and especially for this exam, a lot faster. And then finally, uh, one of the most important topics is the index, and that's gonna be what I cover today because I have a pretty comprehensive strategy. Now, these books that I have here, these books are not the, uh, the GWAFT, it's the one that I'm taking tomorrow, actually, and I've been uh, preparing for them the same way. So basically, what I like to do, uh, so this is this is one book, for example. What I like to do is I like to color code the top. And what this allows me to do is, as you can see from the index that I'm gonna show on the screen here, you can really quickly see from the column uh, what color is being presented. And based on the color that's being presented for the item that you're trying to look for, it'll help you grab the book faster. Generally, when you do these tests in person, they do not give you an extra table. And so you're gonna have all of your books stacked together like this. And instead of pulling it, pulling it all the way down so you can see the number, I like to just be able to pull it really quickly to see the color, and then I can color code and match. Additionally, I like to have 
the sides be where I separate chapters. That way I can really quickly know, oh, this is um, access control. I can go to book uh, two or three or the green one. And then I could just pull this tab right here and then I'm immediately take into the access control chapter. This is really important because uh, you're gonna have to really quickly find definitions uh, because there are gonna be tiny nuances between the differences of these questions. Now, finally, uh, what you're gonna need to do is also figure out what you wanna put in. Uh, I like to have tools, or in this case, for this exam, it was exploits, are on the top. And so, for instance, if I, if I knew I wanted to get SQL injection, then I would go to the top here, and then i just scan for it really quick. On the bottom, in this case, I use uh, these quick tabs for tools, or theories, or processes. So, for instance, on the bottom here, um, all the CSRF defenses, uh, same site cookie. I had a hard time understanding it, so I knew I was going to keep on going back to it. Um, how Unicode works. So a lot of those big picture items uh, I have on the bottom, that way I can just really quickly pace over to them. Now, for example, if I'm dealing with the exam and I have all my books, um, I'm just going to find something really quick. I have, I have an index below me. So let's just say, uh, cross-site scripting, uh, defenses, how to encode. Uh, so I know instantly looking at the book, this is in book two. So I'm gonna pull up book two, and then I know that it's on page uh, 60 or 76. So then I'm just gonna start going to page 76 and on 79, and then boom, I'm already there. So then I'm able to use this immediately instead of uh, trying to find it from even just the chapters. So it's really helpful to have the index for uh, terms, and then it's really important to have the tabbing for general topics, because sometimes they're gonna ask you a question that you don't have in your index, and that's okay, and that's expected, but you wanna be prepared for that. So to save the most amount of time, I'm gonna tab everything out like this, and then I'm going to uh, also have my index. Additionally, they allow you to bring in any other resources as well. So in my index binder, I'm gonna have uh, different programs I'm gonna be using. For instance, SQL map was a really big one for this exam. So because of that, I had uh, uh, a huge, uh, I basically just printed the uh, dash help verbose command. And then I got all of that information, just pasted it onto a piece of paper, uh, tabbed it on and then stuck it onto the index that way if I had a question that involved SQL map, the flags or anything like that, I'd be able to just pull it up, boom, uh, and use it. For the pacing strategy, it's gonna be around two minutes a question. That's, that's how much you're aiming for. And you really wanna make sure you stay on track. They give you a chance to take two breaks during the exam, which is really nice. A total of 15 minutes. You don't have to take them if you don't want to. You have to understand that uh, you're gonna have to really quickly blow through these questions I generally like to take my 15 minutes about three quarters of the way through the exam because I try to get all my questions done about a minute per question or less. That way I burn my brain out, I take a 15 minute break, I come back and then I have a lot more time, especially when it comes to the cyber life questions. Those are going to be really difficult and if you run out of time, you can't just guess them. Unlike the other questions where it's like, uh, you know, three to five choices, the cyber life could be eight to 12 different choices. So your chances of guessing the CyberLive question right is, is almost impossible. It's a very tough exam. At the very end of it, you gotta know what you're doing. You can't game the system. You have to know what you're doing, but knowing tabbing, knowing the index is gonna allow you to really effectively find uh, that information faster. Of course, to tab and index, you also have to read the book. And I highly recommend you watch the videos because the instructors, they focus on what's important and they ask questions about what's important, just like college. So you have to understand, oh, if they're making a big deal about this, it's probably important. Keep in mind, this was my first uh, SANS exam that I did. When I did my first practice test, I actually got a 40%. It hurt. So don't think that you're gonna ace it right away and, and take in your index to those practice exams and, and use it to refine it. After I did that practice exam, I, I was I was pretty pretty butthurt. Uh, that, that really was, was a painful experience. However, it taught me where I needed to improve. 
they give you this amazing feedback when you finish the practice exam on what you could do better at. And generally, it corresponds to what you don't have in your index because you weren't able to find it. So go back, rewatch those videos, do everything you need to do. I came back the next time and I got a 96 on the practice exam the second time around because I came in ready. I came in having watched all the stuff that it recommended I watch and having uh, redone my index, adding an extra 100 or so terms to make sure I was really prepared. So don't be worried if you fail your first practice test. It's okay. Generally, you buy the bundle that comes with two practice tests and a third test. That's what I highly recommend. Some of you high-speed folk may be saying, I can, I can challenge the exam. I don't think you can. Uh, the reason why is because these exams are very based on what is in the books. And if you don't have the books, then though you can obviously still know the information, it's gonna be very difficult for you to get a good passing score. So I don't recommend challenging it. I don't recommend getting the books, you know, illegally or, or whatever. Just go through the course, try to get a sponsor through your school or through the military or through your employer. And then hopefully you can just get the books and then do it the standard way. I haven't seen anyone pass the exam unless they have the books. So I highly recommend that you have the books when you walk into the exam. Now, obviously some people uh, have the books to study and then they go take the exam without the books. That's a totally different thing because they've already read the books, but all the information is in the books. Everything you need to know is in there. But there you have it, that's the strategy. Like and follow if you liked it. Comment if you have any better tips and tricks, and I'll see you next time.